Hi, I'm Diva from Musical Hell, and I know the score. Scott's Legend is among my favorite guilty pleasure movies. Like a lot of fantasy flicks from the 80s, the story is kind of thin and loosely cobbled together from various folklore and hero's journey tropes, but it's visually stunning, it's got a pre-crazy Tom Cruise, Mia, hey, wasn't she in Ferris Bueller, Sarah, and Tim Curry hamming it up as only he can as the villain Darkness. It's even got Billy Barty and Robert Picardo in supporting roles. Yes, that's actually the holographic doctor from Star Trek Voyager under all that makeup. Learn something new every day, don't you? It's also one of those movies where the stories about the production's troubles are at least as interesting as the movie itself. Curry tore his skin, removing his prosthetics, and was put out of commission for a week. All the dialogue in the forest had to be redubbed because the set was so noisy. The actor playing Gump had to be redubbed because a producer didn't like his German accent. And a huge fire at Pinewood Studios destroyed the set just days before filming was scheduled to wrap. To top it all off, a preview screening of the film tested so poorly that Scott recut the entire thing and replaced Jerry Goldsmith's original score with music by electronic rock group Tangerine Dream. Hence the subject of today's episode. Odds are, if you've seen this movie on video or television, you've seen the American cut with the Tangerine Dream soundtrack. But in 2002, Universal released the Ultimate Edition DVD featuring the original 113-minute director's cut of the film with the original Goldsmith music reinstated. This naturally changes a lot of the movie's tone, but does it improve the overall experience? I'd be a powerful wizard indeed, could I answer? Suppose you tell me. Thank you, I think I shall. The first thing you notice about Goldsmith's music is that it's in a much more traditional mold than its replacement. It's a dramatically orchestral work that seems equal parts John Williams and Igor Stravinsky, and its classical style reflects a lot of the movie's influences, like Cocteau's Beauty and the Beast and the early Disney canon. The other distinction is that the director's cut includes a couple songs for the heroine Lily who comes off as more mischievous and impertinent in the extended edition, giving her just a touch of a dark side that plays into the later scenes when Darkness tries to seduce her. To balance this, she's also given the song My True Love's Eyes, a sweet folk tune filled with natural language that indicates the overall innocence of her character. I feel magic starting within me when I look in my true there's also this great moment where she sings to Jack while the goblins are running down the unicorns to kill them, which adds an ironic touch to the scene. As his lips met our breath, he went sweetly to death at the roots of the bluebells is where he's left. But apart from My True Love's Eyes and a nice oboe motif for darkness, Goldsmith's score doesn't have much in the way of memorable themes, which the Tangerine Dream soundtrack excels at. Compare Goldsmith's music for the introduction of the unicorns, which is fine but not particularly attention-grabbing. Nothing is more magical. With the solemn anthem from the theatrical cut. Look! Ugly one-horned mule! In many places, the different scores highlight different emotional aspects. Take, for example, the scene where Lily dances with the magic dress and gets transformed into the Bride of Darkness. Goldsmith uses a surreal and increasingly wild piece heavy on vocals and violins.
all the Tangerine Dream music is this creepy calliope-like theme, which is gentler but still has a disturbing edge. the director's cut of the scene come off as more sinister, while the theatrical cut plays more into the seductive aspects of the moment. Likewise, the Tangerine Dream music for the scene where the heroes raid the demonic kitchen is a quick staccato motif, emphasizing their race against time. Goldsmith's tense chords, on the other hand, give their actions a stealthier quality. Overall, I do prefer the Tangerine Dream score because I find it more distinctive. Although it could just be because that's the score I heard when I first became attached to the movie. Goldsmith's soundtrack does have its moments, though, and it's worth having a look at the Ultimate Edition just to see how this cult classic might have turned out. I'm Diva, I know the score, both of them, and now so do you. <laughs>